NBA best, 38 and 6, behind reigning MVP Giannis Antetokounmpo. Now, look, I know Milwaukee fans get frustrated when the media talks about his potential free agency in 2021. We talk about it because Bucks Brass is talking about it. GM John Horst joining the Woj Pod to discuss his plan to keep the Greek freak. The environment and the culture we've tried to create in Milwaukee, and I think we've done a good job so far, is there is a family environment. We do care about personal parts of, of each other's lives outside of basketball, and we try to celebrate those things and share those things with each other. At the end of the day, we believe that if we can create a system that Giannis can thrive in, we can plug in players around him that will help him thrive and will help the system thrive. We can do that in Milwaukee. If we can do it with a great superstar. We can do it with a great coach and have a great system in play. I think we're going to have a chance. All right, so Brian, what do you think of his plans? I think the Bucks and John Horst have done a spectacular job. Yeah. Um, if you look at the way that team is built, it is ideally structured around him. He seems happy. He seems invested. Um, they haven't been fortunate enough to be able to get a second superstar. That said, they have done the best they possibly can to add to that team. Um, but unfortunately... In this modern-day NBA, you are constantly, constantly, constantly tested by the superstars. And unless Giannis is being charitable, mm -hmm. it's hard for me to understand why he would extend next summer. Why he would take the Supermax offer, which the ownership has already let slip. No surprise, they're going to well, give it. Well, my gosh, if they don't, they're, they need to have their, their minds examined. Um, now, if they win a championship this year and he walks off the parade and they're holding the paper and he's emotional, and he just signs it, that'd be great for everybody. Right. But Giannis is going to be a Supermax player no matter what happens, whether it's next year or the year after. And so this is the difficulty that exists with this new concept of, of extending. It turns the extension into the pressure point because if the player doesn't extend, all of a sudden there's all this drama. And Giannis has shown no hint that he, doesn't, that he wants to be anywhere but Milwaukee. But if they don't win the championship especially, I just don't see – he doesn't have an incentive to sign it. Right. And that could and, – and that, and that is no fault of Milwaukee, their fans, John Horst, Mike Budenholzer. That's the system we have. And I'm going to tell you something else, Coach. If Giannis doesn't sign the Supermax and stay there, the entire Supermax thing will have been a failure. Because the way the Supermax was written in was specifically – for this exact situation to keep you honest, because this yep. is the point Isn't the where Kevin Durant already a failure. The Supermax was designed as a bribe. Guess what? Bribing NBA players, these superstars who already make hundreds of millions of dollars throughout their career, who get so much money in endorsements, they are not able to be bribed to throw away their prime on an organization that they feel doesn't deserve it. It hasn't worked. I know it was a reaction to Kevin Durant leaving Oklahoma City. Right. I get it. The teams wanted to your point of, hey, that pressure point comes now a season earlier. They want basically a heads up. Right? Oklahoma City felt it didn't get enough of a heads up on KD and that they might have been able to deal him for something as opposed to having him walk away. But I don't know. I'm kind of with Brian that Giannis could absolutely love being in Milwaukee, have no intention on leaving. Why should he have to make that commitment a year early when he could make the same commitment for the same amount of money and stay in Milwaukee? I'm not saying he should leave Milwaukee. I am not saying that. But just keep his options as open as the team's options get to be because if he signs the extension a year later they could trade him if they wanted to and again i don't think they're going to do that no <laughs> but again why wouldn't why wouldn't he want the same rights the team has but i think it's a security blanket too i mean this a this is an injury league as well i mean and so if you get it in ink at least you know your contract is done and you don't have to be worried about if you get hurt or i not. think that's what the league hopes but Kevin Durant just tore his Achilles and got a full max. He didn't lose a dollar. No doubt about it. I'm not saying it wouldn't, but you just never know how that yeah. goes uh, from an injury standpoint. But I think at the end of the day, I think everything you guys said is right. The Milwaukee Bucks have done everything right. They've created an incredible environment. And I think for Giannis, at least in my opinion, why I think he should stay there is, is Coach Budenholzer. Mm -hmm. the, the relationship that they've built, the system that he's built around him, the way he's opened up that floor and uh, has allowed him to thrive and, and have developed his game under coach. I just think that when you find that kind of relationship as a player, you got to stick with that and ride it out because eventually you get over the hump. In fact, even if he went to another organization, I would find it hard to believe that that organization could do a better job right. putting the team around him than the Bucks have. No. That said, if in 2021 there is a superstar in wait there and there's Giannis could come and he doesn't have rings, 
I could see him just because that's the nature of the NBA. So it's uncomfortable. I would love true. to see a guy that's a free agent go there to play with Giannis. Yes. I just, I would really like and to I, see and, that. And why shouldn't they? It's been proven itself as a class organization. They've done the right things. The guys have so much fun. You see them in the pregame locker room, you know, pregame hallway, right, and doing all that stuff. They're winning. If I am another star around the league, I am definitely giving that. They have a world class arena. They have a world class practice yeah. facility. There's there's no reason not for him to sign, except for the fact that the the calendar doesn't doesn't well, agree with him. He's got to recruit. Maybe maybe Giannis should be doing a little bit of recruiting. I know the Bucks are continuing to recruit Giannis. Maybe Giannis is. To, eh, we'll see. Mike Conley. Let's talk about him because he returned to the Jazz oh, Saturday man. after missing 19 of his previous 20 games with a hamstring injury. Conley played 15 minutes off the bench in the win over the Kings. Now during his absence, Joe Ingles moved into the starting lineup, and the Jazz have gone 17 and four in the last 21 games he's played, all as a starter. So. Fizz, you coach Mike Conley in Memphis. You guys are close. What do you think is the best role for him right now on this team, especially also where Donovan Mitchell was able to play and all that stuff? I just think they need to slow walk his injury and not rush him back to playing big minutes because I think for them, what they're trying to get to is a higher place in the playoffs. And Mike Conley is going to be a big part of that, that movement forward. And so I think they got to really be cautious in the way that they treat his injury. And if that means bringing him off the bench for a while and playing him low minutes, then that's what it is. I know Mike is so selfless. He'll do whatever they ask of him. But I know in the playoffs, you want that guy on the floor playing minutes for you because he, he's got ice water in his veins and he's a big time player. The correct decision for now is to bring him off the bench. It may not be in a month, but for now it's to bring him off the bench. All right, up next, we're going to be talking about Kemba Walker. He is, this number is crazy, guys. Wait for it. He is 0 for 28 all times playing against LeBron James. That includes the playoffs. 0 for 28. Can Kemba Walker just get a little something here? How can he finally break the streak tonight? <laughs> First, though, time for our second distant replay of the day. This one from this date in 2007, and, and I don't know who it could be. Are you in the building for this one, too, Coach? Back also. He's got to watch from behind. Look out! Oh! Oh! oh. We thought it was going to be a dunk, but it wasn't. Hey, and I, I had him. He was 40, 40 years old in Memphis, and he did a 360 dunk in the game. So. He does exactly he, the same move. Guy moves. doesn't age. Now. I'm, just, I'm tired of him. Whew. Four decades. Four decades in the NBA. Um, on the jump. Earlier, hoops. Martin Luther King Day. We got him all day. Andre Drummond switching out on Bradley Beal, and it does not go well. Oh. <laughs> Wizards bench can't control themselves. That's I called mean, taking advantage of the switch. <laughs> it's hard to stop a Mack truck from going downhill. I mean, <laughs> Andre needs some help there, right, Coach? Yeah, I don't Come know on. if he should be out there. That's a tough one. Ooh. <laughs> the bench is amazing. Oh. <laughs> That's amazing. By the way, if they can get that kind of bench play next season when you get John Wall back, I'm just saying. I think it was Okay, with his uh, support. I'm just saying they're fun. No defense, but they're fun. Marcus Smart hit 11 threes on Phoenix uh, on the way to beating Phoenix on Saturday. He shot 50%, 22 attempts. Now they did lose the game, but still 11 threes. He's fearless. He's fearless and he uh, he worked on his three ball all summer. You can tell with the way he's letting it go. And uh, he's just crazy enough to hit that. <laughs> you know, I would never thought we'd ever see this from Marcus Smart, but frankly, they need these baskets yes. right now. They're struggling. Uh, they need some shooting from their role players. Yes. Yep. Well, the Celtics hosting the Lakers tonight. Good news for both teams on the injury front. Anthony Davis, Jalen Brown, and Kemba Walker all making their returns tonight. So a good stock Ooh. game. LeBron taking advantage of being in Massachusetts. Drove over to Springfield earlier today for his son's high school game at the Basketball Hall of Fame. LeBron will go head to head with Kemba Walker in Boston later tonight, and it has been a one sided matchup. LeBron, guys, is 28 and 0 all time versus Kemba. That includes a four game playoff sweep in 2014. You were there for that? I was there. I for too that. was there. I was with a sideline <laughs> reporter for you guys for that one, and it, it wasn't, it could have been a three game sweep. It was not close. 28 um, 0, though. Usually, like, something happens in some game where you can get a game in there. Kimba hasn't paid one of his goons to take him out yet. You got to get LeBron out of the game. <laughs> That's what you got to the, do. The Hornets did actually beat the Cavs once while LeBron was in Cleveland, but okay. Kimba was out that game. So, and this doesn't so really... doesn't count. Yeah, so this doesn't really reflect on Kimba as no, much as it reflects no. on the greatness of the Heat and the Cavs and the difficulty of his years in Charlotte. But Kimba's coming off of a sore knee. I guarantee... And the, and the Celtics need a, a big win. 
I guarantee he's going to bring everything he can tonight because he never wants to hear this stat again. Yeah. No, he doesn't. <laughs> he's a big time player. <laughs> I do want to skip over to our lead cast game of the night. Thunder at Rockets. This is going to be their third regular season matchup. Now, OKC and Houston split the first two. They're only three games apart in the standings. Fizz, did you imagine we would be saying that coming into the season? I tell you what, you got to give Billy Donovan and those guys a ton of credit for what they've done. Sam Presti, to me right now, is executive of the year for what he pulled off in the offseason and to have this team competing for playoffs. Uh, it, it's really awesome to see. And I think Chris Paul has actually found a home that he feels really good about. He's got two young guards that he can mentor now, and uh, they're playing great basketball. You know what? I think if they, if both teams had the option to undo the deal right now, they wouldn't. Mm -hmm. I think right. both teams are kind of actually happy with where they are. A year from now, let's see where it is. I don't know, man. <laughs> I am really interested. There was a lot of buzz the last time these teams played. I expect right. it again today. Thanks to these guys for joining me. Jump is back tomorrow.